Factory accessories. How much do they hurt the power? And what happens when you replace them with a Mazir electric water pump? Zip, zip. Hello, everybody. I'm Richard Holder. I'm at West Tech Performance, and that can only mean one thing. I have another engine up on the dyno ready to test. And hey, Richard, why don't you run those motors real world? Run them with accessories. Run them with mufflers. You know, real world. Stop running that Mazir electric water pump. Wow. I don't know what that guy's problem was, but for the real world guys out here, this video is for you. On our 4.8 liter, I installed full accessories and a full exhaust, meaning we ran mufflers this time. But we ran the motor, then removed the accessories and installed the Mazir electric water pump to find out how much power the accessories were actually worth, you know, in the real world. Okay guys, we got our 4.8 liter up on the dyno and we've installed all the accessories, but we did not install the AC. We're not gonna run that on the engine dyno, but we did install the factory water pump, the factory power steering, and the factory alternator. The alternator does not have a charge running through it. We're just spinning the alternator. The power steering is looped basically, so it is circulating fluid, but not through the rack. This is as close as we could get. The water pump is circulating water and at varying engine speeds like when we run on the dyno. So let's find out how it does with all of those accessories, then we'll take all those off and install the Mazir. Okay, while well, running all the testing on the 4.8 liter, I wanted to find out how much all of this stuff was worth. So we're running the alternator, the power steering, and the factory water pump, and normally we run these motors with an electric water pump. So what I do is run this, obviously tune it, make the most power, then we're going to take all this off and we'll put on the electric water pump and find out how much power all of these accessories actually consume. And there you run. Okay, we've got all of our accessories on here. We ran our dyno test with the accessories. Now we're gonna take these off and just install the electric water pump. Okay, we've got our power steering and alternator off. Now we have to take off the water pump. Before we can do that, actually we have to drain the water out of the block. We'll disconnect the upper and lower hoses. Then I'll unbolt the water pump. We'll pull that off and then put on the electric pump. Now off comes the pump, a few 10 millimeters, and even though we've drained this, we haven't drained the block all the way out, when I take these off, it's going to leave water. Try to get most of it into the bucket.
Okay, we've got our electric wire pump on. Got our hoses hooked up. This is the way we normally run these. Now let's see if there's a power difference. Electric wire pump. Okay guys, let's jump right in and take a look at our comparison of running the accessories on our test motor, our 4.8 liter, versus running the electric water pump and how much of a power change that is. But I'm gonna throw in a little bonus test for you that I didn't even mention anywhere else. But while we're going through result, the results here, and this often happens, um, we'll run a test and go, oh look, we compared this to this almost by accident. <laughs> this, this, is one of the, this is one of the things. So we'll start off with our 4.8 liter. It is a total junkyard 4.8 liter in fact it wasn't even a good one i had to fix a number of problems with this thing a flat cam a broken lifter uh, a broken rocker a couple of different push rods all you i mean the guy even tried to glue a rocker back on which shows you in what the state of disarray of this 4.8 liter but all these things were fixed and it eventually worked out pretty well and we've used it for a test motor on a lot of things now for this particular test because i was also running an m90 supercharger so please take a look at that video it is up already but i was going to run an m90 supercharger on it and it required me bolting the M90 supercharger onto a Holley high ram because that's the adapter plate that I made. So we ran this 4.8 liter with a Holley high ram and the lid that goes on the Holley high ram with 105 millimeter throttle body wouldn't probably be my choice for this particular mild combination, but it's what we had. We also ran it with a Brian Tooley Racing, no springs required, an NSR Truck Norris cam, and we ran it with the stock spring. So all of this testing, including running this thing out to 7,000 RPM, was run with the factory well used high mileage uh 706 headed springs so they're the they're the mildest of the combinations and because it had the mildest camshaft so it, it did very well i was very very surprised it kind of shows the stability of that particular camshaft running it out to this rpm even with those stock very tired springs we also ran a set of inch seven eighths long tube headers and then ran collector extensions and mufflers on this and then it was first equipped with all of the accessories. Now the accessories included the factory water pump, the factory alternator, and the factory power steering. Now the alternator did not have a load. We were not we were not charging with the alternator. We were just spinning it. And on the power steering, we didn't have it hooked up obviously to a rack. We just had it looped so it was pumping fluid. So you can take that for what it's worth. But those were the accessories that we ran. We did not run the AC off of the inner belt on the on the factory damper. So we ran it in this configuration and we first ran it on 91 pump gas and then tuned it accordingly. And we could put all of the timing in. So because we run these motors cold um, and with an open throttle body, and so there's no more power left to be had with this combination, even if we were to turn the timing up. And we know that because we tried turning the timing up and we get to a point where we don't make any more power. So running this configuration, the combination produced 374 horsepower and 329 foot-pounds of torque. You'd see it made peak power, despite the fairly very small camshaft, out at 66, 6700 RPM. And here's what happened. Later on, we were to run this thing in this exact same configuration, except with E85. So it was, it was tuned again with E85. We didn't change the timing. It was still running 29 degrees of timing. And it liked that. But the E85 itself picked power up 385 horsepower and peak torque checked in at 336 foot-pounds of torque and this is odd and we have 
come to expect changes in power with E85, especially on boosted applications. But very rarely do I see it on these mild low compression NA LS motors. We see it a lot on LT motors that have high compression, Coyote motors, those kinds of things. But I don't normally see a gain. But we did see it in this case, and I wanted to include it in this test. Now let's jump up and take a look and see what happened when we change the accessories. Okay, now we have our 4.8 liter, modified 4.8 liter running on E85, and we ran it with full accessories. And we'll take a look. This is the power output with the full accessories. 385 horsepower and 336 foot pounds of torque. Remember, we're running this with the high ram, the Brian Tooley NSR camshaft, long tube headers, mufflers, and then obviously full accessories, you know, <laughs> real world. And then here's what happened when we removed all the accessories and then just installed the Mazir electric water pump in place so that the crank pulley is not driving anything. It's not driving the alternator, not driving the power steering, and not driving the factory water pump. Here's what happened when we installed our Mazir electric water pump. You can see we got a big change in power. This power jumped up from 385 horsepower to 404 horsepower. So we got a 19 horsepower change uh, out at the top. And then we also got a change in torque, 336 foot pounds at the peak up to 348 foot pounds of torque. So not as much of a gain in torque. And it looks like we kind of, and this is kind of what you would expect from uh, changes in parasitic loss associated with driving things. If these include the accessories. And that is that we got more of a gain at the top of the RPM range than we got at the bottom. It's also important to note that no change was made to the tune. I don't run closed loop, we run open loop. So the amount of fuel, the timing curve doesn't change, but the amount of fuel that was supplied for both these runs was exactly the same. Also, the air fuel on both of these is exactly the same. What's happening here is the motor was always producing this amount of power. It's just that we didn't register it on the engine dyno because it was being consumed <laughs> to drive these accessories. And it was still producing this amount of power when we got rid of the accessories. It's just now we register that on the dyno because it wasn't being consumed, but it was using the same amount of fuel and producing the same amount of power in both of these instances. It just was not being consumed through parasitic loss by driving the accessories. Armature holder, please make sure, like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff, and I'll keep testing.